Hello to all my AHC friends. I'm Kim Cray, the Salon Mentor, and today we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the fascinating world of personalities and communication styles. This is an area I just love. It's one of my most requested team training sessions, and we also do a lot of this in our leadership development as well. So, what is your natural personality style and how do you find out? Let me share my screen and tell you all about it. All right, so first of all, you need to do a quiz. I'll pop the link to an online version here in the post. So you're welcome to go to that, do the quiz, and it will instantly tell you what your personality is. And then you can come back and I'll debrief that for you and, and uh, bring it to life. Now, if you'd prefer, I will also attach a printed version you can print off even give to all of your staff and you can all take the quiz together if you're doing the uh, printed version then what you need to do is choose one of the four options on each line and you choose the word that best describes you if you think there's two or three that you can relate to or that describe you choose the one that describes you at work so what would your teammates see and how would they describe you? And again, if you're doing it as a group and you're not sure which one, ask your teammates and they're usually pretty quick to tell you how you are, right, at work. Fascinating, hilarious, but also insightful to see how we come across to other people. Now, once you've done your quiz, and by the way, you're welcome to pause now, do the quiz and come back. But if you've done that quiz and you know your results, let me tell you what they mean. If you've done the printed version and your highest score, so you're going to total up the results in each column. If your highest score is in the first column, you are a peacock. If your highest score is in the second column, you are an eagle. If your highest score is in the third column, you are an owl. And if your highest score is in the fourth column, you are a dove. Now, I've chosen to use the birds or D-O-P-E personality system for today and I love that for the hair industry because it is easy to relate to and it's colorful and I find that my colorful creatives really relate to this method. I've studied and used a number of different ones over the years. What I find is that whilst they'll have different terms to describe each personality or just labels for each personality, the description of the personalities is strikingly similar. So it seems like we're all talking about the same for personality types, we're just giving them different names. So as I said today, we're going to use the birds method. So what does this all mean? Let's dive in and meet each of the four personalities, starting with peacocks. Peacocks are colourful, loud, talkative, fun, friendly creatures. They are happy to be the centre of attention and naturally are the centre of attention because they're natural storytellers extroverted in nature, outgoing, drawn to people and constantly talking all the time. So some of the positive things about their personality, friendly, um, will make anyone feel welcome there, ideal hostesses. So they are perfect on your telephone or at your front desk as long as they've got a little bit of admin support because you're going to see they're not the best at attention to detail, but they will greet people, they will build relationships on the phone. They will literally reach through the phone and connect with people and make them feel like they've known each other for years, right? They are enthusiastic. They are sunny, optimistic. Everything's going to be fine, um, but they are loud. No peacock ever enters a room quietly. So where everyone else walks in the morning holding their coffee saying, good morning, good morning, peacock will walk in and say something like, hello, possums. Right, crack everyone up and that'll set the tone for the day. If they've had a bit of a drama on the way to work, they've been running late, rushing in traffic and someone cuts them off, you will hear about it. The story will be this big, the arms will be flying, it'll be exaggerated, they nearly died and you will hear about it all day. That is a peacock. Needs to tell you about it and the story will get bigger and bigger and bigger. They naturally connect with people. So they make friends quickly. They build their clientele quickly. You can drop them at a bus stop and in three minutes, they'll be best friends with everyone and probably have invited everyone back to their place for drinks on Friday night, right? So they will know everyone in your shopping center or in your area. 
great when you need some help because they'll know who all the cleaners are, who all the maintenance men are. They'll know the tradie that works over here or lives over there. So when you need something fixed or some help in a hurry, Peacock's the one to ask because she'll just give her mate Bill a call and he'll be there in a shot to help her out because people love um, helping out peacocks because they're just warm and sunny people. Um, they will also tend to build a clientele quickly. As I said, they're great. They're masters of the first impression. Can be a challenge sometimes in client retention for certain personalities um, because they are entertaining. Everyone will have a great time in their chair, but you're going to learn that attention to detail, accuracies can sometimes be a challenge. So for personalities who want precision, sometimes a peacock can struggle to retain those clients, but they will make a friend out of a new client in a heartbeat. And half the time the client is happy just to turn up, sit in the chair and not even have their hair done because they know they're going to have a great time. You find a lot of personally requested clients in a peacock's column. As I said, they never let the truth or fact get in the way of a good story, right? The bigger, the better. So everything is colourful and exaggerated. When you're managing them, they thrive on your attention and your praise. Even if they didn't quite get it right or even if they didn't hit the goal, the fact that they tried their little hearts out needs to be acknowledged because if you don't acknowledge it, they won't do it again. They're not terribly um, driven by hitting the target or getting the commission. They just want to make you happy. So if they try really hard to hit the target or even if they do hit the target, and they get all of this praise and attention from you. They're like the little, you know, Labrador that's wagging their tails, you know, thinking, I'm a good peacock. Look what I did, right? And that's the surefire way to make sure they do it again and again and again. They live for your reinforcement and your praise. They live to make you happy. They are the ultimate people pleasers. Um, but they need to be liked. And they'll often get themselves into a bit of a pickle by over-promising because they want to say yes to everyone because they want you to like them. Um, but delivering on that can be a challenge. So your little baby uh, first year peacock will say yes to anyone who says, can you do a shampoo? Can you take my color off? Might not get done in the next 15 minutes. They genuinely intend to, but they've got all these other things to do. Um, and they can get a bit stressed when people start getting cranky at them because why hasn't it been done? It's been 10 minutes. Come on, let's get that color off, right? They get a little bit frazzled like that. They're delicate, emotional creatures um, that are just childlike and fun and want to play. So if it's fun, they're all over it. If it's not fun, you'll find them wandering off and finding something else to do and leaving someone else to do it because peacocks don't do it if it's not fun. Colorful, vibrant, zany, hilarious people but they do come with a few quirks that we need to be aware of. So our peacock friends will be constantly talking. At school, they will have had the report card that said, you know, needs to be less talkative in class or would do well to concentrate more or something like that, right? So peacocks, because they're natural connectors, they talk, 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 talk. Um, when they zip out to the bathroom and you're wondering 35 minutes later where they are, they've stopped to chat to everyone along the way. They're catching up on all the gossip, right? Um, they are always going to be the one in the back room that you're dragging out because they're out there having a chat to whoever's on lunch, even when they're not on lunch, right? Chat, 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 constantly. And they do it loudly. So even though they're having a great time and laughing hysterically with their client, the poor person next to them can't hear themselves think. The stylist can't hear the client, you know, respond or talk to them. Everyone is looking for a mute button or at least the volume button to turn the volume down on the peacock to a dull roar. So at some point, you're going to be having conversations with your peacock about, I love that you're having such a great conversation with your client, but you just need to keep an eye on the volume, right? Or you might have a little strategy in place I used to use, which is um, if it's just getting a bit out of hand, you have a code word. So when someone uses the word banana, that's telling your peacock, shh, right? Or you might say to them, listen, I need you to be aware of this. Here's what I'm going to do to help. If I walk past you and just give you a little tap on the arm or a little tap or a tickle in the middle of the back, that means shh, bring it down a little bit, right? Um, and no one needs to know. It's not embarrassing them. It's not condescending them or correcting them in front of a client, which will crush their little peacock hearts, 
right? Because they hate to be criticized, um, but it's just managing that, you know, the conversation in the salon. They're also chronic oversharers, by the way. So you're going to need to have conversations with them about professional environment, what's appropriate, what's not to discuss in a salon environment. Now, peacocks are perpetually distracted. They are the ultimate bright, shiny object personality. So what that means is you can give them a task to do here and the minute the phone rings or someone walks to the front desk, whoop, they're gone. They are definitely more drawn to people than to tasks. So they'll drop a task in a heartbeat to get to a person and have a chat, um, but they will be distracted. They'll start this job, get distracted, forget what they were doing, leave it half done, leave a mess, move on to the next and do it again and again and again and again. So of course, they're gonna leave a trail of messes and half finished jobs behind them. They'll also get a bit distracted when you're trying to give them instruction. They'll have a challenge with listening and retaining information sometimes as well. So um, you'll often have to ask them to repeat things back to you. Okay, just so I know you've got it, tell me what you're going to do. Particularly if you're going to ask your peacock to apply a colour for you and you're giving them multiple uh, formulations, I need this at the roots, this at the ends, or we're going to alternate a t-section foil pattern with these two colors and then I want this as a global color just make sure they've written it down when I'm managing young peacocks I usually make sure they've got a notebook or post-it notes in their apron pocket with a pen and whenever I'm about to give them a color formulation I say okay you got your notebook you ready okay here we go and they literally write it down while I'm talking to them and I can see that it's correct the other thing I love to use for my young peacocks is the little sticky dots and I would put them on the color bowls so that I could have R for roots, E for ends, F1, F2 for foil one, foil two, because peacocks on more than one occasion have been known to hear half of your explanation, get distracted, right? So you might give them a couple of copper formulations. They think, oh, copper, that's going to be pretty. I had a great copper this morning, but I would have liked that to have been a little bit deeper maybe. And you can see they're off on a tangent, not listening, which means when they go to apply, they're going to get to a point where, oops, which bowl goes where? And maybe the root color goes on the ends and vice versa, and they end up in a mess. So just put some structure around them, get them to write it down, repeat it back, maybe label the bowls just to make sure you don't have disasters. Because of this distraction, they are chronically late. Um, if they don't intend to be, they try really hard, but whatever they see, because they're incredibly visual, whatever they see grabs their attention and they're gone. Just trying to get out of the door in the morning to get to the work can be an absolute challenge because they've been distracted by, oh, I left washing on the line. Out they go to take it off the line. Then they're distracted by something, you know, in the garden. This needs a water. And all of a sudden they're 45 minutes late. Oh my gosh, right? So if you need a peacock to be at work early on Friday morning for a team training, don't just tell them once because you're going to say, okay, now remember this, they'll say, yep, got it. I'll be there. They're not going to be there, right? So I will say, okay, have you popped that in your, have you got that in your calendar? Have you got an alert an hour before, just to remind you? Okay, great. And then I will send a fun, has to be fun for a peacock because you don't want to send a message that gives them the impression that you don't trust them, you think they're going to mess something up, right? But send a fun little text message saying you're all set for tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, right? And then in the morning say, see you at eight. That's a fun little way of just remind, 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 because somewhere in there, she's going to look at that text message and go, oh, I forgot. Right. So just again, remind, 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 but do it in a fun way for a peacock. As I said, listening is a challenge because there's too many other sparkly things going on. So if you need it to be correct and accurate, get them to repeat it back. As I said, the distraction causes mess. <laughs> so they will leave mess wherever they go. They're colorful personalities. They're not the most patient people. So they don't tend to have the nature to fold things and put them away. Um, if they borrow something, they will tend not to give it back. If you're lo if you're losing any equipment, check the peacock straw first. Usually they're bower birds, kleptomaniacs. They've collected it all. There's a pile of everyone's equipment in there, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't realize I borrowed that. Sorry about that." Just from personal experience too, when a peacock borrows things like your razor, keep an eye on it, follow them, get it back because they can tend to just leave it on the bench or leave it on the trolley, it gets knocked, boom, it's on the ground and it's either broken, you've got a safety um, hazard as well. So 
they uh, tend to, as I said, leave messes wherever they go, unfinished things. They're sensitive little critters as well. So they're very soft. Their hearts on legs really are our peacocks. They try so hard and they're barrels of sun and fun and laughter, but they're delicate and they get hurt easily. So if your words are a little bit um, sarcastic or sharp, you're going to see the little peacock's lips start to quiver and a couple of little tears start to come because they will get upset quite easily. And, of course, the forgetful connected to the distraction. Forgets half the things you tell them. All right, so that's our peacock friends. At the other end of the spectrum, let's meet our eagles. Now, as you can imagine, with the, I guess, persona of an eagle, eagles are our army generals. They are dominant, in charge, decisive kinds of guys, right? Natural high achievers. It is inevitable at some point that your eagle is going to be in charge, even if they're 17 years old. And you are likely to have had an eagle if you've started them as an apprentice, you know, be a little bit mouthy or in your eyes, disrespectful. So you're having a 17, 18 year old tell the seniors what they should be doing or what they what they messed up or arguing with something and thinking they've got a better idea, right? So an eagle was born to lead. They came out of the womb believing that they knew the right the way to do everything, backing themselves 100%, even if there's 100 people in the room and 99 of the others disagree with them, they will believe that the 99 are wrong, they're right, they know what they're doing, no one else knows what they're talking about. So they will inevitably be in charge, but they've got a bit of a bumpy road to get there, I find. Eagles, again, when they're young, they're brash, they're direct, they're blunt, and they get themselves in trouble because they lack a, that little bit of consideration for others um, and taking people with them, like building a team. There's not usually a nurturing body in an eagle's, there's not a nurturing bone in an eagle's body usually. They have to learn that over time. Um, so they will inevitably be in charge of something, um, but they have to learn their way there. And they usually have some, I usually say a bit of bark off. They've had some conflicts along the way because they've been raked over the coals for being you know insensitive or, or being too bold or breaking rules or whatever that they normally do so they're going to lead I tend to have conversations and put boundaries around them but I also give them opportunities to be in charge of little jobs and in little sections because they thrive on that they love the fact that you could recognize their talent clearly and their competence and their ability um, that you put them in charge of something and they will thrive. And I've found in my own experience over the years that um, I have had, you know, a first year dominant eagle that's driven everyone crazy, but with a little bit of modifying, they've turned out, you know, four years down the track, they're our next manager. They're an absolute superstar. Um, they are determined, stubborn, and very strong-willed, which makes them the ultimate achiever. They will always achieve the target, win the competition at all costs. They need to win. They will not accept less from themselves. They must achieve. And they will steamroll right over the top of whoever's in the way, usually, again, until they develop a little bit of self-awareness. So they can upset some people along the way, break some rules, um, but they will be your highest income earner usually. This brings another challenge. I've often had conversations with business owners and managers who have a very strong eagle that maybe hasn't had the boundaries put around them and maybe is causing some trouble and really pushing back. Um, and the owner is hesitant to deal with it because they're the highest income earner. Right now, dangerous situation, because if you back down from an eagle, they've got you bluffed and they will keep pushing, 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 right, until they get their way. So you've got to learn how to sit an eagle down and have usually a direct conversation, but that sets expectations around their behavior and sets boundaries. They are a super hard worker. In fact, as the years go on later in life, they will find themselves being prone to burnout because they're that type A personality that can't switch off. They will just work and work and work. And their whole identity comes from work and from their achievements. That's how they see themselves. So that is their whole life. And other areas of their life tend to suffer relationships, family and health 
come to mind, all right? But very, very hard work. Learn quickly, very quick mind. They need to progress. They need variety because they get bored very easily. So you need to keep an eagle stretched with a progression plan. Um, also, they need to see opportunities usually for their income to be able to grow. So an eagle is going to need a plan where they have their income determined by their own efforts. They don't want limitations put on them. They don't want the same package that everyone else gets because they see themselves as superior and quite different, right? Um, so if you don't provide those opportunities to grow, you lose your eagles, your high performers, because they'll go and find that somewhere else. And there's usually a lot of businesses that are happy to have a high performer. Um, something that comes with this kind of dominating steamroller type personality is disregard for rules right rules don't apply to them rules apply to people who don't know what they're doing right so they will quite happily break rules to get the job done or to hit the target um and you've got to have conversations with them about the target is awesome but here's the damage over here right that's not okay so just be mindful of that um as i said they thrive on responsibility so even when young sometimes that's a way to calm a dominating young eagle is to give them responsibility and literally teach them how to manage on little tasks even cleaning rosters and you know things like that one at a time teach them how to be responsible teach them how to organize how to delegate um, inevitably you'll be teaching them how to speak to their teammates in a way that is respectful and encouraging and you know um supportive etc because that usually doesn't come naturally to our eagles they are very task oriented as you can probably sense and unemotional which is the opposite of our peacocks our peacocks are very people oriented and highly emotional eagle is unemotional they will tell you right between the eyes what they think you should know whether or not it upsets you that's not their concern their responsibility is to tell you how it is so you can see that um, they will naturally tend to head toward business ownership or leadership because they want the status of that. They don't like people telling them what to do, so they want to be in charge. But they're going to have to learn to build relationships and manage people in a positive way. Otherwise, they have very high staff turnover. All right, some challenges with our eagles. Constantly impatient. No matter how fast you do it, it's never fast enough. There's this perpetual sense of urgency with our eagles they naturally they're very bossy they'll tell anyone what to do because they naturally think that they know better um they as i said struggle with people and relationships particularly sensitive types um they tend not to prioritize uh people family relationships until they learn the consequences of that the hard way then that might make them adapt their behavior and become more aware in that area but usually unfortunately they experience turmoil in their lives and they can be very solo creatures they tend to spend their life working and that's pretty much it because they just don't prioritize anything else they don't make time for anything else and empathy is not one of their strong suits they you know too bad so sad get over it take a spoonful of cement and harden up right that's that's an eagle's kind of approach to everything chop chop hurry up. Um, they don't mind a bit of an argument, does an eagle. That's a bit of a challenge to them um, because, again, of course, they're going to win and they would see themselves as the superior participant in that argument, but don't expect them to say sorry. I think they are biologically opposed to saying sorry. They don't believe they are wrong, even if everyone else thinks so, even if everyone else is in floods of tears, they'll think everyone else is overreactive. You know, they're just telling it how it is right which of course can be insensitive um the burnout issue is a challenge surviving on coffee and stimulants and red bulls etc not a healthy way and from their youngest age they will tell anyone what to do they're micromanaging all right so our peacocks and our eagles tend to be the more outgoing personalities they're quite different in nature as you can see but they are outgoing now we're going to we're going to meet the more introverted two personalities first one is an owl our owls are our keepers of the standard i call them they are perfectionists they are scientists and they are artists they are very precise 
uh, individuals. We, I hear that, or I've read that more genius, genii, geniuses, the plural of genius, come from this personality type than any other. They could equally be a mathematics wizard as a fine art, you know, painter. Um, so they, in your business, quite possibly will be an ideal trainer because of that perfectionism. And also they are deeply artistic. They're quite deep personalities. Keep to themselves. They don't like crowds. They don't like a lot of noise. They're happy to just spend years and years and years mastering their craft. Very precise, very neat, clean and organized. I wish I had a little bit more owl in me. I would love to hire an owl to come and organize my pantries because I can just, I dream of, you know, a cupboard or a pantry that is neat. It's categorized. It might be in alphabetical order. Everything's labeled. That would be a dream to me. I don't have the patience to do that. That is to me, if I broke into an owl's kitchen, that's what I'm expecting to see. Neat organization. And I would just be in heaven. Um, they love a system. They'll have a process for everything. So if you open everyone's junky cupboard under their kitchen sink or their laundry sink where all the cleaners and things are, owls will have lovely little baskets. They'll have the gloves in this one, the cleaners here, the cleaning rags and sponges there. It'll all be labelled, right, because there's a system for these things. You can't be having chaos. Um, they will tend to hang back. They don't like being in the spotlight. They don't like being the center of attention. They're very intelligent observers. They will watch. So they're people watchers. I've known a few a few our friends to be whip smart and highly sarcastic, um, but they'll tend to stand back like at an event and watch and just make these little kind of cutting comments under their breath, right? But so incredibly intelligent, but just hate small talk, hate being in crowds, hate being around people they don't know, just want to, you know, stay with their handful of lifelong friends. So where a peacock knows everybody, Al might sort of have, they might count their true friends on one hand, but they will have known them all of their life and they will be deep friendships. So they're on quite a different level there. Um, very precise, again, highly artistic. So they really find their home creating systems, um, budgeting, creating training plans, being the trainer, although if they're going to be the trainer and they're going to be dealing with other personality types, the challenge for an owl is they need to learn to be patient and encouraging of people who are less precise than them because no one will measure up to an owl's standards. The owl is the superior race, right? We mere mortals are never going to come close to an owl's standards and an owl's perfectionism. And so there's a risk there that no matter how hard everyone tries, it's never good enough. So the owl is constantly picking holes in things. Um, they will always see the flaws. We just have to make sure that they don't focus on that and that they don't kind of unpack and live in that space where they see the negative all the time. Um, what else have we got? Yes, organizing processes, great at admin support. All of us would love to have an owl um, receptionist, possibly not for the connection with clients, but for the organization of files, for the scheduling of social media. They're just fantastic at that. And our bookkeeper is in their element. Uh, very responsible, very disciplined, very logical, very process oriented, quite predictable, um, usually in how they approach things. Uh, and usually they just want to be left alone and they just can't understand why everyone don't doesn't just follow the rules. Life would be so much easier if people would just follow the system in place. What comes with our owls is obviously with that perfectionism comes a little bit of impatience. They don't want people to touch their stuff. They've got a place for everything. And because of the perfectionism, highly critical. So again, can you imagine peacocks lacking that attention to detail and you know trying to work with an owl trainer? Owl is going to pick all the flaws. Peacock's going to be in tears in about three seconds flat. So we've got to just soften those expectations a little bit and learn to encourage and note the progress. Um, owl's worst fear is getting something wrong. So they don't want to change. If it's not broken, don't mess with it. So they can be a bit resistant. Of course, they don't trust anyone to do anything like they would do it. So they're 
find it really hard to delegate because they can't trust people, which means they end up overloaded with all of the things. Give it to me. I'll do it. Then I know it's done well. Why am I so overwhelmed and exhausted? There you go. That's why. They get a reputation for being a little bit aloof, a little bit distant because they're very comfortable being on their own. Again, they don't like small talk. They don't like big, loud personalities. They don't like crowds. So they're not the kind of person who'll come up to you on your first day in a workplace and give you a big hug and welcome you. They'll, you know, they'll keep their distance and check you out a little bit first. So they tend to hang back. Um, so they get a bit of a reputation for being a little bit, not necessarily unfriendly, but not friendly. Um, and again, always in their head, overthinks things. Um, this is a byproduct of the perfectionism, I think, as well, because they just get buried in making something perfect. As apprentices, they were the apprentice who could do something beautifully in a training environment, on a head block, on a model. But the minute you try and book a paying client and get them out there on the floor, no, they're never ready because they're terrified of messing it up, getting something wrong. Um, in time, hopefully, they learn to back themselves because they can get themselves out of just about anything. They have the smarts to do it, um, but they just have to trust themselves that they can do that. Otherwise, they won't. They'll stay too safe and they won't ever progress. All right. Last personality type is our dove. Our doves are chilled, laid back dudes. Everybody's friend, so easygoing, never a crossword, never a bad mood always so thoughtful and kind. Um, everybody loves a dove. A dove will remember your birthday and bring you cupcakes. If you're not feeling well, they'll you know bring you something special back from lunch. If you've just come home from a couple of days in hospital, they'll turn up with a casserole, right? They're so thoughtful, um, reliable, stable. Doves love a routine. They'll do the same thing over and over and over again, which makes them really predictable employees. It makes them very stable employees. Um, they're popular employees, but there are some challenges that we'll get to as well. Um, go with the flow. Whatever you want to do is fine. Which movie do you want to see? I don't care. What do you want to see? Do you feel like having Japanese or Thai tonight? I don't care wherever you want to go. As you can tell, they struggle to make a decision because they just want you to be happy. If you're happy, they're happy. So don't expect them to choose. Can you imagine taking them to like 42 flavors of Baskin and Robbins or something? They'd be there for a week. Um, but, you know, struggle to be decisive and they just want to please everyone. Very patient and tolerant. They rarely get upset. Very happy to do those boring tasks that everyone else gets impatient with. Dove will be happy to do that and they'll spend all day doing it. Great at following processes, but don't want to be in charge. Don't give them the responsibility. They don't want to be um, responsible if things go wrong, but if you tell them what to do, they'll happily do what they're told. Um, they hate conflict. If there's any tension in the team, they're quite unsettled and they want to calm it down. They'll be the peacemaker all the time. So they tend to make friends with people easily in a different way than our peacock, um, but they'll make friends naturally because they're just so forgiving and so easygoing, never any trouble, um, calm. I rarely see a dove lose it. They've got to really be pushed. Um, the calm under pressure, they're the steady eddy personality, but what comes with that is they're not a performer. They're not usually a star. So they can often be micromanaged and performance managed because they don't give the vibes that they're taking it seriously. You're going to see that. We're going to go into that in a little bit more detail shortly. Challenges that come with our lovely doves are they get stuck in their routine. They will drive the same way to and from work every day of their life. They'll stop by the same Chinese restaurant on a Friday night on the way home, order the same dish They'll get home and watch the same show on television because that's their routine. They find comfort in routine um, and they don't like being moved out of that routine. They struggle to voice concerns. So if they're not happy about something, a dove will usually be the last person to ever speak up. And that can be a problem because they can tend to just, you know, say, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then it builds and builds and builds and that then a dove can explode, lose it. They can feel like they're being pushed, micromanaged, 
um, henpecked a little bit and they will tolerate it for a long time and then the heels will go in. So a dove won't tend to verbally react. A dove will just resist, dig the heels in and go slow. Love a comfort zone as much as a routine. So if you are trying to move them onto learning a new skill or you want them to you know, work in a different way or move even spots in the salon, they want them to work from a different station, that can be a problem. They like their routine. Um, we've talked about the indecisive, the urgency. They tend to take things so calm and so easy because they're so laid back that they run late, they lose track of time, they don't place importance on time schedules and targets and urgency, which drives eagles crazy, um, but they just want everyone to be happy. They don't see the point of getting themselves all flustered over a target or a time schedule. As long as the client's happy, who cares, right? Well, we care because there can be you know, some other impacts of that, but you're going to have to manage your dove around that. They don't like confrontation, so they'll, they are the king of sticking their head in the sand and hoping it'll all just go away. They, As leaders, they are the ones that find it the most difficult to manage strong staff, to manage underperformance, and to just raise issues with their staff, right? Big avoiders because they don't like confrontation. They just want harmony. All right. Who are the best buddies? Who gets along the best? The two personalities most in love with each other are peacocks and doves. Why? To a dove, peacock is fun and colourful and adventurous and sparkly and the dove is the perfect buddy to a peacock's madcap adventures. The peacock can drag their dove friend wherever wherever they want to go. Dove will just go, okay, whatever you want to do, yep, that's fine, right? Um dove accepts peacock isn't critical of them uh they're just a match made in heaven so they just get along so beautifully dove just accepts whatever peacock wants to do and thinks their friend is just the most fun hilarious person on the face of the earth another combination now not so much in a best buddies relationship but this is very much a very good working partnership so we've got owls and we've got eagles Eagles, of course, are going to need lead. The eagle needs to be in charge. They need to be in the spotlight. They need to be front and center, taking all the credit and all the kudos. Whoops. But eagle has no patience to follow process and to dot the I's and cross the T's. That's where an owl shines. So as long as the owl is happy to let the eagle have all the glory and all the spotlight, um, they will make the perfect Robin to the eagle's Batman. Eagle needs the owl because eagle does not want to be bothered with budgets and time schedules. The eagle wants to say, can you make that happen? And owl will make that happen. Owl has the organisational prowess and the patience to make it happen. So owl will make eagle look good, but eagle, if they're smart, needs to look after their owl and because without them, the wheels are going to fall off pretty quickly. And also, Eagle is going to have to give Al whatever space Al needs, trust Al that they always get it done on time and on budget. Don't hassle them. Don't give them a hard time. Just give them the space and know that Al will always get the job done. Al will anticipate what Eagle needs, um, but Al will also have to just tolerate eagles brashness slash bossiness right so this can be a very good business combination in fact everyone needs an owl right arm or an owl to ic but for the eagle particularly who wants to take on the world and achieve the impossible they need the detail of the owl behind them to actually make sure that things stay on track all right who clashes eagles and doves poor doves eagles are going to henpeck them to death why? Because a dove has no sense of urgency, is not target driven in the least. So they run behind, they underperform, they take everything far too casually and they are mortal sins to an eagle, right? Also, the dove will, will tend to take the easiest path, not the path that the eagle wants them to take, not the path that the process dictates that they should take. Doves can take shortcuts. 
if it's a hassle, they'll just take the, the shortcut and take the easy road, right? Now, this all really gets up an eagle's nose or beak because to an eagle, thou shalt hit target and thou shalt not run late. Everything needs to be done yesterday. I want excellence and I want it now. The eagle is the ultimate results-driven personality. So Dove's laid-back nature isn't going to cut it. And an eagle is going to micromanage them and henpeg them until they get what they want, which is going to drive Dove crazy. So and if this isn't resolved, eagle will henpeck Dove right out of the business, right? But what they need to do is sit down. Eagle needs to sit down and have a frank, responsible conversation with Dove to say, listen, I know you don't like me on your back, but here's the challenge. I have a responsibility to deliver a result and I have a responsibility to these clients to make sure that we aren't running them behind and keeping them waiting. If you take responsibility for your timing, your schedule and your performance, I am off your back. I'm happy to do it. But if you don't, I will be there every step of the way to make sure those things happen. You get to choose. And Dove, if you get that conversation presented to you, listen and take it seriously because an eagle will only give you that option once. If you don't, Step up and take responsibility for those things. Eagle is on your back for the rest of your time in that business. So listen up. All right. Now, the other combination that clashes is peacocks and owls. Let's look through the owl's eyes first. To an owl, remember, owl wants quiet, calm, neat, organized. Peacock is loud and forgetful and messy. And an owl just looks at that and ugh, does their head in right? Peacock wants to borrow everything. <coughs> Peacock will borrow Owl's equipment because it's always there. It's always clean and immaculate. Owl hates that because Peacock doesn't look after it. Peacock doesn't ask. Peacock just takes and then it's lost. No one can ever find it again. So that again feels disrespectful to the owl who really looks after their things and peacocks lack that accuracy and attention to detail that is so important to an owl. Now, looking through the peacock's eyes, the owl always seems sad and picky. They must just be upset. They mustn't be very happy as a person. So a peacock will be constantly probably trying to cheer them up, which drives owl crazy. Owl wants to be left alone. Um, owl needs peace and quiet, dislikes noisy people. Peacock is the ultimate noisy people. There's no peace and quiet around the peacock, all right? So you can see that they're going to clash. Um, owl being a neat freak, peacock being messy, that's going to clash. Owl being a perfectionist, peacock lacking accuracy and lacking, you know, detail and follow through is going to drive owl crazy. And again, don't touch my stuff. So you can see why these two get on each other's nerves. Um, I had this combination in one of my businesses years ago. I had um, a fourth year owl who was neat, calm, to this day, probably the neatest foiler I've ever seen in my life. Hi, Cassie, if you're watching this. Um, and I had a peacock who, you know, first year, who was lovely and bubbly. And um, what, at the end of the day, if it was a flat out Saturday, you know, 17 staff madness, uh, Al just needs some quiet space. So she would go and sit in one of the beauty rooms and tally up, you know, her report sheet for the week and update her client records in peace. If the peacock was zipping around with the broom or the vacuum cleaner, opens the door, finds Al sitting on their own, to a peacock, no one wants to be on their own. She must be sad. I'll go and cheer her up. Al is like, ah, get her out of here. So it's just understanding for what each personality needs. We had to have a chat to the peacock that said, Al's not unhappy. She'll come out when she's ready. She just needs a little bit of quiet time. That's her space. Leave her alone. She'll come out, right? And we just had to calm our owl and like, hey, let's not kill anyone. Peacock's just trying to be friendly. <laughs> so what have we learned out of all of this? No one personality is the best. No personality is broken, right? Every personality has wonderful strengths as well as a few quirks that go with it. It's like the gift we purchase. So we've just got to appreciate that if we want this, this comes with it, we have to learn to manage that. And as the leader, it's our responsibility to adapt our style to suit their natural tendencies rather than expect them to adapt to us. 
And also as a team, we want to help our team understand each other, appreciate each other's strengths and give them space to shine and use those strengths and accept them for who they are and the gifts they bring, not for not criticize them for what they don't have. People always say, or one of the um, one of my favorite sayings was always, a fish is incredible until you expect it to climb a tree. It's not what fishes were designed to do, right? So understanding that people are the way they are, they're meant to be exactly how they are. I like to use a lot of fun and humor to diffuse differences um, and tension around that and just let people play to their strengths. So remember, every personality is meant to be exactly as they are. And ideally, you want your business to have a blend of personalities. It's not great if you've got a room full of eagles or a room full of peacocks. Things get crazy like that. A blend of all personalities is ideal. So you get all of the gifts, but that means you need a team who can adapt to very different personalities as well. Keep that in mind when you're recruiting your next person, as well as a skill set. Keep in mind which personality do you think you need next to balance your team. Keep that in mind. All right, if this has been interesting for you and you want more detail, I've got a couple of options. I do the full version of this. It's one of my most requested team sessions um, in an online program, uh, Understanding and Mastering Personality Styles. Or if you're a leader and you want to know how this relates to you as a leader and particularly how you lead your team, this is a big part of our Leaders Lab program, which is available uh, a couple of times a year live and it's available as an online program as well. So there's a couple of places there that you can go to learn more about personalities and how you can master them and have them working harmoniously in your business. I really hope that's been of benefit to you. It's one of my favorite areas to work in. I could talk to you about this for days. I won't, um, keeping an eye on the time, but I really hope that has helped you become more accepting and tolerant of people who are very different from you and has helped you appreciate the gifts that some of the personalities that tend to irritate you a little bit actually bring to your business and why they can be such good additions to your business. That's it from me. I'm Kim Cray, the Salon Mentor. Bye for now.